Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Leo here, and welcome back to another Quick Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, we're talking about the SUAS program yet again, and if you have not seen the introductory video, you can go ahead and check the I card up in the corner of this video, where today's video is talking about how do local units get started with the small unmanned aerial systems program in Civil Air Patrol. And so with me today, I have Martin. He is very experienced with the drone program in Civil Air Patrol, and he's a technician, he's a mission pilot, he's got his FAA certification, really wonderful speaker, and I'm, I really appreciate him joining today. So I hope you enjoy and you learn a lot about how do you get an SUAS program started in your own unit. Hello everyone and welcome back to another quick Civil Air Patrol video. I've got Martin back with me again today and we're going to be talking about how to get started with SUAS in your local unit. So apparently this is a very simple process. So Martin, I'm very interested to see how we, we get started with this very simple process. So it is a simple process in the sense that there are really two things that you need. The first thing is obviously you need an SUAS okay. or a drone for those who missed the earlier video. Uh, SUAS is small unmanned aerial systems. Um, obviously you need an SUAS. And the second thing you need is someone to teach you how to fly them mm. and what CAP requires. And, and that's, uh, and I realize that we're doing that in another video as well. Um, yeah. But essentially you need an SUAS instructor. Uh, that is the trickier thing to get because there are less of us floating around. Okay. How do you um, find one? <laughs> so, so the easiest way is actually to reach out to your... Um, Wing DOU, uh, the Deputy Operations for the US, uh, the SUAS program. Okay. Uh, they should have a resource list of who can come out and teach the uh, SUAS. Hmm. But the other thing that you can do is, I mean, learning to fly it, if you have drones at home, fly your own drones. Okay. Uh, make sure you log all your time, by the way. That is a crucial, crucial thing. So they should get a little logbook for specifically... Yes. Drones. Okay. Yes. They, they actually make logbooks that are specifically for SUAS. Mm, okay. They look just like regular pilot logbooks, but make sure that you have a way to accurately log your time. Mm, yep. Um, some of the drones will log it for you. So like if you're flying DJI drones, those have an, uh, an app inside it hmm. that you can open up that basically gives you all of the logged time. Oh, nice. Um, so you can then just transfer that to your logbook, which is kind of cool. Um, some of the other ones don't do that, so you just want to make sure that you properly log your time. Yeah. Okay. Um, really, the, the big thing is just getting a drone that's useful. Um, mm. And I say that... I say that a little bit because usefulness depends on what you're doing with it. If you're using it to practice, it doesn't need to be the most expensive drone on the planet. That's fair. Yeah. Um, you want it good enough so that, for example, you can fly it in most conditions that CAP, uh, CAP flies a drone. Mm -hmm. So if you have a drone that doesn't work in, for example, 30 knot winds, which is the maximum for a CAP drone, by the way. Yeah, that's a lot um, of wind. <laughs> it is a lot of wind. Um, so most of the DJIs actually are fairly decent at that. Um, the thing to remember is just that if you're flying in high winds, it's eating a lot of battery because the onboard intelligence is using a lot of that battery to hold it in place. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, you, you want to make the the drone that you're using as close to the CAP requirements as possible. So going too cheap means you're going to get this light drone that can't handle anything. Mm. Going too expensive means you've spent a lot of money for a really good camera that, unless you're going to use it for that, probably you spent too much money on. Yeah. Um, I, I recommend between, like, three and about $500 is about what you want to spend for a decent-sized practice drone. Okay. And that'll get you something like a DJI Mini, which is really cool and cute and tiny. Hmm. Um, but it'll also get you a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, anything more than 500 and you've spent too much on a practice drone. It's a bit much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even 500 is a bit high. Uh, but... So, quick question then. Does CAP issue drones? CAP will issue you drones if you meet the requirements. Technically, each squadron 
is supposed to get a Skydio 2, but they changed the requirements a little bit. Okay. So now it's each each um, ICP, Incident Command Post. Hmm. So if your squadron qualifies as an Incident Command Post, and you have one mission pilot and one mission technician, hmm. then you can get a drone issued to your squadron. Okay. I thought that they had STEM kits with, like, the little tiny ones. They do have STEM kits with the little tiny ones. The little Could tiny they ones use are... those to get hours? They can use those to get hours, yes. Okay. Um, a- anything that flies as a drone, you can use to get hours. Okay. Um, it's just a question of, of, you know, how effective the battery is and how good it is if you take it outside <laughs> and try to, fly it, tr- try to fly it. And, you know, even five mile an hour winds on, on the small STEM kit ones, you're going to start seeing them fly all over the place. Yeah, they don't have a good time with that. So, you know, that, that's, that's the tricky bit. Mm-hmm. Um, your wing might actually have a whole bunch of the older drones, okay. uh, which are the Phantom 4s. Um, you might be able to get some of those issued. They're, um, yeah. they're a little bit more free at handing those out than they are with the Skydios. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the Skydio XUDs, they're only going to issue if you have mission critical needs and you have people that are qualified and you have, I think it's three incident command posts per state but i could be wrong on that okay um but it's also like a 1300 hundred yeah. dollar drone so they're much more reluctant to give those out that's fair uh, when we deploy in the flat packs that's what we get in the flat packs mm-hmm. okay um but really yeah so for a, for a unit to get into it you, you just got to find an instructor that can get you that can start getting you mm-hmm. uh, thought up on them um, cadets can get involved. It's one of the few main specialties where cadets Yay! can get involved. <laughs> um, so cadets can absolutely qualify as technicians. There are no restrictions on technician qualification. The Brilliant. only restriction on mission pilot qualification is that you need to be able to get your Part 107 certificate. Mm, yep. And you need to be 16 to qualify for that. Okay. Um, you. So that's that's the other thing is you do need to be able to qualify with the part 107 mm-hmm. um we also recommend that everybody get the trust certification from the yep. faa website um that's a freebie thing that everybody can get it basically teaches you the rules of the road in essence for that's for good SUL. to know <laughs> yeah. and that's something that you know you could even do that you could even do that as an aerospace education thing at a squadron meeting one day yeah. just run through all the trust certifications and then have everybody hop online and take the test mm-hmm. um so that's, you know, a, f- a fun way to get people sort of started in that. Yeah. Uh, but logging time is important um, to eventually qualify as a mission pilot. You need a minimum of seven hours, mm-hmm. which doesn't seem like a lot until you realize that it most is. of your logbook entries are going to be like 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2, because <laughs> that's how much battery so time quickly. you have. <laughs> Got to go um, charge my battery now. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's yeah. that's another weird corollary in the sense that the more money you spend on the drone, the better the battery is. Yeah. So if you're not spending a lot, you're really going to have a lot of entries of 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2. Unless you get all the extra batteries, and then you, you have like 20 batteries, and you charge yeah. it, and you get a lot of landings and takeoffs. Yes. Plus all the batteries that need to be charged. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I have... For most of my drones, I have at least three extra batteries. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah and, and when you get issued the, the Skydio 2 from CAP, it comes with four batteries. That's good. Yeah. The, f- the fourth one is hidden because it's actually attached to the drone. Oh. So you just have to remember to pick up the drone to find the fourth battery. Mm-hmm. So oh. I'm, I'm going to say from, from my unit's experience, when we first started doing stuff with drones it was mainly because of the, the cadet competition and they were like there's a drone portion we we're like oh okay <laughs> we're, we're not ready and so we we had some stem kits like we ordered from national the stem kits with the drones they don't tell you what kind of drone they will send you um and so like i think we i don't know it like it's like a b like the I don't remember the name of it, but it was very... I, I haven't seen the stem kit, so yeah. Very, very teeny weeny, and it has four four little blades, and it's like... Wee, wee, wee. It's, it's super cute. But, like, we, we got introduced that way using that one, and then there was a different 
quad that we had to use, like a small, small quad. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, still, for, for the cadet competition, there is a specific kind that they use. And so we, we also had requested that. And we, we, um, we were able to purchase some extra batteries because they, they were like, we're practicing and we need people to be proficient with this. And we do not have the battery life because we only have two batteries. And I was like, ah. And so we ended up ordering like a couple extra batteries for like 20 bucks. But the the way that we've gotten more of our unit members involved beyond just our cadet competition team is that another unit in our group, like there's the, the squadron level and then the group level and you got wing, right? And so we, we had our group level um, commander and like our one of our aerospace people and someone from operations they were like oh we we want to put together some drone training suas training and we'll, we'll have a weekend we'll have a location and if any of your members are interested coming out then they can come out they can fly drones we'll have the drones available and they can do obstacle courses with like pool noodles and hula hoops and other things chairs and and try stuff out and so we've actually gotten quite a few members very interested in doing SUAS because they were able to, to try it out. So if you don't have an instructor in your local area, it's possible that your wing might do a training of some kind or have something available at wing headquarters or all wings are different, but it's possible that you might have the opportunity to just try it out, maybe even at a wing conference. Who knows? But there are different opportunities and if an opportunity isn't available you could always talk to people ask if there is interest or if there are instructors around the wing so i i'm you know one of the other recommendations i would say is check out if you have an air crew academy yeah um, a lot of the air crew academies are adding uh the sus capability mm-hmm. um i in my day job i work as a consultant so i'm pretty much good working from anywhere as long as i have a computer um, I have already spoken to a few other wings out on the, the, the middle of the country and on the West Coast, mm. where I am happy to fly out if the wing wants to arrange for like a weekend. Um, I am happy to fly out, bring the drone, at least one of the drones that I have with me, and we can, you know, we can set something up that way as well. So there are some of us that are willing to go to insane lengths to get drone programs up and running in other states. So the, the SUAS program just in general is really starting to grow. And while it might be a little bit challenging to get started, once you've got that instructor, once you've got that uh, mission pilot and you have a drone, it shouldn't be too difficult to, to really get into it. But if you have a unit that's really, really interested in it, um, send one of your most interested people to either NISA, which is the National Emergency Services Academy, or if your state or region runs a local one, for example, we're running one in the Northeast, which is NERISA, mm-hmm. Northeast Region Emergency <laughs> Services Academy. Um, send one of your people there with the explicit instruction of, hey, let's get all my sign-offs done so that I can actually become an instructor because our wing is lacking instructors. Mm, yep. um, until I came back to Massachusetts from, from NISA, there were zero instructors in the wing. Um, I have since managed to get two more people trained up as instructors, and one of those is now also a check pilot. That's good. So, you know, that means that it's not just me driving around Massachusetts like a nut, (laughs) but we're also working with other wings. We're working with uh, Rhode Island Wing. Um, We have a little bit of connection up with Maine Wing. So, you know, I've, I've told them, look, if you need me, tell me when let's schedule something put it on the calendar and, and i will i will come up there and help you guys mm-hmm. sarexes um are good uh, search and rescue exercises are another good place to to build up that capability if you have an instructor and a check pilot in your wing mm-hmm. get them involved in sarexes yeah um we've started adding that ever since we've ever since i came back so we've had at least three of our our search and rescue exercises where we've had drone training good so that's wonderful yeah so if you all have any questions about suas i may not be able to answer all of them but martin certainly can and i'll let him know (laughs) about any of your questions down in the comments down below so thank you martin for joining me again today and that that's all for this video thank you